Conference Park. We're Buenas noches y bienvenidos a la, a la reunión comunitaria del Parque de Deportes de Acción en el Parque Regional de Wheaton. My name is Matt Weir and I'm a landscape architect and project manager with the Montgomery Parks Park Development Division. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be here tonight. Mi nombre es Matt Weir, soy un arquitecto de paisaje y también un gerente de caso. Bienvenidos a todos esta noche. And before we get into the meeting, if you would like to listen to this presentation in Spanish, please click the globe interpretation icon at the bottom of your screen. This will take you into a separate breakout room where a translator will translate this presentation. Si está interesado en escuchar el español, una vez la interpretación comience, usted verá un símbolo de un globo en la parte inferior de su pantalla. Haga clic y únase a nosotros a la sala aparte para el español. Gracias. And I'll just give it a couple seconds while folks filter into that room. So bear with us and we will get started in just a moment. Esperamos brevemente para los que se unen a mí en el canal del español y comenzaremos brevemente. Gracias. Okay, a couple more housekeeping items before we uh, get into the content tonight. At any time during this presentation, you may submit questions and comments in the Zoom Q&A box. Our staff that's on the call tonight will be keeping an eye on these questions throughout the meeting. And towards the end of this, we will do our best to answer all the questions uh, that are received. I do want to note that given um, the excitement about this project, there is a lot of people attending tonight. And if you see someone that asks the same question that you were wondering about, please just give it a thumbs up on Zoom. And um, that will signal to our staff that this is a high priority question to answer. This meeting will also be recorded and later up, up, uploaded to the project website, both in Spanish and English. So you can share it with your friends and family after tonight. And if there's one takeaway, please take the online community survey. The link is here. The website is mocoparks.org slash shape your thrills. We would really appreciate if you take this uh, survey. It only takes about five minutes. And lastly, my contact information is on the screen. You can send Mr. me emails. Mr. Weir, this is a Spanish interpreter. My apologies for interrupting you. Uh, for some reason, I was not able to join the breakout room. So I asked for uh, support from the technical team, please. Thank you. Ok, thank you for that heads up. Mientras esperamos eh, resolver los problemas técnicos eh, para unirnos a la sala del español, en pantalla tenemos detalles respecto a esta noche. Eh, va a ser grabado y tienen un enlace eh, donde puede obtener eh, esto, esta, esta grabación. Eh, por favor, le pedimos que complete una, una encuesta al final de la reunión. También tenemos un código QR para ahí. Y por último, tenemos los detalles de nuestro gerente de caso, Mr. Weir. Gracias. Esperamos un momentito para empezar la interpretación. Peter, were you able to enter the Spanish translation room? I, I think he's in now. Okay, all right, thank you everyone so much. This is the uh, the beauty of virtual meetings. Um, it, we find that we can reach more people with virtual, but of course there are technical challenges along the way. So thanks for bearing with us as we get started. I think the Spanish room is all set up now. Okay, carrying on. Thanks again for uh, hanging with us there. We have several parks staff on the call tonight. We have landscape architects. I am a landscape architect. We also have engineers, park planners, uh, the park management team that maintains and keeps the park in good working order. We, and we also have park police on the call as well. 
and behind the scenes, our public affairs team is helping to advertise this meeting and set up the Zoom. And if you got a postcard in the mail, it's it's thanks to them. We're also joined tonight by Roadside Harwell, which is a um, landscape architecture and urban planning design studio. The agenda is as follows. We'll start by uh, explaining a bit of some, the background information to explain why this project is happening and where it is proposed. Then we'll get into the proposed amenities to explain what this is all about and the some concept alternatives to explain how these various amenities could be arranged on the site. Then we'll get into next steps, some more information before hopefully spending the majority of tonight on questions and discussion. So there's a lot to cover, but we'll do our best to move through quickly uh, so we can get to any questions that you have. <clears throat> Throughout the meeting tonight, we'll have a couple of Zoom questions that will pop up on your screen. If you would please uh, take the questions when they pop up and let us know your thoughts it would be most helpful. We really value your opinion. So the first question is on a scale of zero to 10, how much do you, have you heard about the Wheaton Regional Park Master Plan? Zero means you've never heard of it. And 10 means that perhaps you were heavily involved throughout the uh, master plan process and you're very, very familiar with it. So click a, a number and then click the blue submit button. And we'll give it just a couple minutes so people can keep can read the question and submit their answer. Okay, can we get the results up on the screen, please? Okay, so hopefully you all can see the results. And what I'm seeing is a, a bit of a bell curve. Some have never heard of this master plan. Some have heard a little bit, and most are somewhere in that five, six, seven, eight range. So it's a good diversity of responses. And we ask this question because we do think it's important to explain a bit of the background of this project. So let's transition to talking about Wheaton Regional Park and the master plan. This park, as I'm sure most of you are familiar with, is in the southeastern corner of Montgomery County. It includes Brookside Gardens, of course, the Nature Center, the Equestrian Center, and the Shorefield area. Shorefield is where there's the adventure play and the mini train and the carousel, for example. A majority of the park is forested on steep slopes with many great uh, natural habitats and environmental resources and stream valleys, for example. And then the Rubini Athletic Complex is at the southern end of the park. I want to note just how dense of an area surrounds this park. 200,000 people live within two miles of the park. So this is a major destination, not just for those 200,000, but also uh, a, a people who are coming throughout Montgomery County to this park. But tonight we're going to focus on the Rubini Athletic Complex. And this is the hub in Wheaton Regional Park for all things active recreation. So that includes baseball fields, softball fields, ice skating, there's a dog park, um, tennis and basketball courts, and the tennis bubble, among other uh, amenities. And there is lots and lots of parking here as well. So with a park that's over 500 acres in size and over 60 years old, and with so many amenities, we, Montgomery Parks and the community, we need a, a game plan to prioritize new projects in the park. And the Wheaton Regional Park Master Plan does just that. It takes a comprehensive look at the entire Wheaton Regional Park to study how it can best serve Montgomery County residents. And the vision of the master plan is to essentially ensure that we're keeping up to date with the recreational demands and best serving a uh, diverse per population with uh, unique recreational interests. The master plan included extensive community engagement over more than a two year span. And we did our best to reach the community uh, where they are and meet them where they are. 
So this included in-person and virtual meetings, so advertising on social media and the radio and on the back of WMATA buses, for example, and doing online surveys and meeting with HOAs and civic association groups, for example. And after these years of planning, community engagement, the master plan recommended dozens of projects throughout Wheaton Regional Park. And these projects included things such as biking and hiking trails, ADA accessibility improvements, environmental improvements, such as stream valley um, or stream channel restoration, renovating sport courts, wayfinding signage, dog park improvements, the list goes on and on and on. And we also heard during this time that the Rubini complex, while it has great features, um, it can also feel a bit sparse uh, at times. And it's we, and also at this time, we heard a strong desire for skate parks and action sports, um, both within Wheaton and throughout the county. So for these reasons, the most notable project recommendation is the action sports park. And if you would like more information and background on the Wheaton Regional Park Master Plan, please visit this website. We have a short video that explains just about everything you would need to know about the Master Plan, but in more detail than I can go into tonight. Following on the heels of the Master Plan, Montgomery Parks underwent a countywide skate park survey. And this took a comprehensive look at the whole county and specifically the skate park needs um, for different areas of the county. So again, we had extensive community engagement and we had an online survey that asked a variety of questions about um, skaters' favorite parks and why they like these parks so much, preferred skating styles, your skill level on a skateboard, for example, and what else makes skate parks great. So through this process, we learned that we have many, many avid skaters in Montgomery County, and we got a lot of great data that helps inform us as we design skate parks at Wheaton Regional Park, but also at other parts of the county. And we took that data and that feedback and we scrutinized it. We, we can even break it down by demographic area or geographic area and age and your skill level to see what really makes a skate park great. And we can use that to inform us as we uh, design new skate parks. So this skate park survey, coupled with the findings of the Wheaton Regional Park Master Plan, uh, give us a great roadmap for the action sports park. <clears throat> so transitioning away from park planning to the specific site, let's talk about the athletic complex. If you have ever visited the site before, you'll recognize this image. This is your view as you enter the park. And if you haven't visited, to the right is a steep slope up to the tennis bubble and tennis courts and the basketball courts. And then on the left side of this photo to the um, is a steep slope leading down to the uh, baseball and softball fields. So hopefully this rings a bell for you if you've visited before. And this map is a map of the approximate project area for the Action Sports Park shown in pink. So again, the, the tennis bubble is the upper ter is an upper elevation. The roadway and parking lots is a, a middle elevation. And then the fields four, five, and six are the lowest elevation. So Zoom question number two. Um, we're asking about existing issues or challenges that you see on the site currently. And an image, the pet question should be popping up on your screen now. Take a moment, read the question, read the answers. I think you can choose as many answers as you like and let us know your thoughts on the existing challenges with the site currently. Okay, can we release the results? So hopefully you all can see the results. Uh, it's interesting that um, 
it's pretty uniform in terms of what people think the the um, the biggest challenges on the site are currently. But poor pedestrian access, a lack of seating, not engaging for youngest children, and it being really hot and a lack of shade are the top rated amenities. And again, like the first question we asked, we'll be sure to keep this um, data and feedback in mind as we continue the design process. So I mentioned the, the three terraces on this site, the upper terrace with the tennis bubble, the middle terrace with the parking lots and roadway, and the lowest terrace with the baseball and softball fields. And this um, terraced landscape came about because when the site was developed back in the 60s and 70s, it was a hilly landscape. And in order to build buildings and parking lots and fields, the landscape needed to be flattened and filled. So what we have are flat plateaus and then steep embankments between the plateaus. And this is great because it provides recreational amenities, but it creates really poor accessibility from the upper areas down to the lower areas. areas, areas. The entry drive prioritizes vehicles and does not adequately provide for pedestrians or people entering the park on a bicycle, for example. There's a lot of redundant and excessive pavement and a complete lack of stormwater management in the parking lot area. And there are dead-end parking lots. There's uh, some unusual Y intersections and just generally a lack of accessibility from the parking lots to the three fields in the lower area. The active recreational amenities in this space include the baseball fields, basketball, tennis, and the handball court as well. And these facilities that you see on the screen do not currently have ADA access to them. And as I mentioned before, there's a lack of, of good seating opportunities and, and social hangout spaces. But despite some of these challenges on site, uh, there are a lot of recent upgrades that Montgomery Parks has made to these facilities. Most notably, a couple of years ago, we added a restroom facility with ADA parking. Uh, most recently, we added ADA access to field number three, as well as player benches and bleachers for spectators, and new bleachers and dugouts at fields one and two, for example. Fields one, two, and three are also the premier uh, at, uh, recreation, the premier diamond fields in this area. They have irrigation, they have lighting, and they're the most heavily permitted fields almost permitted twice as much as fields four, five, and six. And just last week, we opened, um, did the ribbon cutting for electric vehicle charging stations as well. That's the existing site. Let's talk a bit about the Action Sports Park, which is the hallmark recommendation of the, the Wheaton Regional Park Master Plan. And I'd like to start with a couple goals that we've identified for this project providing a diversity of action sports. This is not just for skateboarding, but there will also be facilities if you're into biking or running, jumping, hopping, climbing, we hope that there's something here for you. It also provides spaces for social connection, not just for thrill, thrill seekers who want to do the action sports, but also places for families and friends to, to watch and spectate and um, enjoy a nice view as well. This facility should provide um, amenities for all skill levels from beginner to advanced, as well as all ages, from the kids that are just learning how to ride a bike to as old as uh, to the oldest person who's still interested in riding bikes at an action sports complex. Making it accessible, I've highlighted accessibility as a problem on the existing site, and we will work to make it not just ADA accessible, but truly a universal and equitable, equitable design to make sure that we are following the spirit of the ADA. And safety. This includes not just um, providing a separated space from vehicles so kids can learn how to ride a bike, but also making sure that we have good maintenance and good design, good visibility, and so on and so forth. Environmental stewardship. It, it starts with protecting the uh, existing forest and 
includes adding stormwater management and new tree planting, for example. And finally, making this a one-of-a-kind facility that houses all these action sports in one place. The program includes six main amenities. These are the, the big reasons why you come to this space. It includes a skate park, which is in-ground concrete, and includes a mix of street and transition skating styles. A pump track, which is usually asphalt, but it could be concrete. And it's a circuit course with a series of moguls and embankment uh, turns for riding bikes primarily, but you can also scooter on this or longboard on this, for example. A bike skills uh, track, which is similar to a pump track, but it's a bit more open, a little bit more green space around it, and it includes a series of wooden and steel ramps that you can ride over and on. This also includes a climbing and extreme fitness area, and this is a bit of a um, question mark at this point. We have a question on the survey uh, for, for you to review and think about, but this could be a place for climbing or maybe parkour or maybe an obstacle, obstacle course. So take the survey and let us know what you think. There's also space for a kid's wheeled play area. And this could be a large flat paved surface that's for kids and for beginners as they get their bearings, riding and scootering, for example. Or it could be more of a bike playground, like you see on the left-hand side, which is like a bike skills course, but it's for kids specifically. But to make this action sports park great, we also need these supporting amenities as well. So as I, as I alluded to before, making sure that we're providing spaces for spectating and viewing and watching, picnicking, for example, and some open space as well, and lawn space where you can kind of just rest and get your bearings uh, on the site. And shade. Shade is always, always, always so highly rated when we do public surveys. People need shade, especially in the hot summer months. So this includes um, shade structures, but also native tree planting to provide shade as well. And this is a really big site. So this is not just shade in a little corner of the site, but really we're trying to find ways to add shade in different pockets of this park. And some additional supporting amenities. Uh, I won't go into all of these, but um, I'll just highlight a few. Um, lighting, water mist play, for example, a space that uh, food trucks could pull in uh, when we have community events here, walking loop paths, for example, and signature skate elements that really create a sense of place and a, and a, an identifiable feature on the site. So that's a lot of program talk. Um, let's just kind of reestablish about the existing site. So as a reminder, the existing sites are these three baseball and softball fields. But the master plan also recommended a couple other adjacent projects as well. And what we did as we started to take that master plan, really think about design concepts, we looked at all of these recommendations, one, two, three, seven, and eight. And we looked at them comprehensively. So we could try to um, make sure that we have a design that is coordinated and cohesive and logical. So with that, I would like to pass it off to Yoshi Kubota from Roadside Harwell, who will explain the design concepts. Thank you, Matt. So tonight we'd like to uh, share with you two concepts for this park. And I would like to begin by uh, describing each of them through a series of diagrams. The first concept is the commons. In this, in this concept, uh, the central green as highlighted in the green bubble there will be the anchor of the space. Each of the activity spaces will be located surrounding this green, uh, green area, with the dark gray indicating the more intensive use um, programming located to the north of the site and away from the residential neighborhoods to the south. The gray areas indicate activities that are more geared towards kids and beginners. 
Also shown on this uh, graphic here is a yellow located on the northern location. Um, at higher elevation, this would be the restroom location in this concept. Now, overlaying the circulation, <clears throat> you can see from these blue arrows that each of the activity spaces are very accessible from the central green. The dotted red line indicates a wider path network, which could double as a maintenance loop. And along with the blue lines, there'll be a inner and outer loop connection circulating throughout the park. Concept two is a green spine. In this concept, uh, a linear green open space will form as the uh, basis of the layout. This green spine separates the intensive use um, activity areas from the kids and beginning beginners area, and the restroom is located at the lower elevation alongside these activities. The green spine also serves as the main um, artery bringing visitors through the park and allowing easy access to each of the activities. A hierarchy of path networks allow for loop circulation throughout the park. Also needed in this concept was the, uh, thank you, Matt, the, uh, the bold red line indicating a 20 foot wide fire lane, bring, uh, providing access for emergency vehicles down into the bowl, the lower elevation. Next, please. So looking a little bit more uh, closely at each of the concepts, the commons utilizes a more urban design aesthetic of the two concepts. It is anchored again by the central green, which is a oval lawn panel that is tilted. Visitors can um, get staged at this location and venture out to each of the activities. There is a great difference at the southwest, allowing for the opportunity to create a climbing wall for a seamless interaction with the adventure play and beyond. The sloped lawn also provides an opportunity for spectating out towards a skate park. The pump track and bike skills uh, track have a uh, greater opportunity for integrating into the forest um, as the images that Matt showed earlier showed. So they are located in the northwest closer to the woodland edge. You can also see here a loop that is highlighted in orange. That will be the activity tr uh, track. The activity track is a wider um, path that allows space for both additional activities and seating areas for people to participate in as they traverse the um, park. Looking out towards the east, we have the restroom that is located at the higher elevation next to field three, with a drop-off loop and space for food trucks located in this area as well. As indicated by the colorful canopies shown here, there will be additional seating, providing great views to all the action happening below. An amphitheater seating will connect the lower and higher elevation in this area, utilizing the existing grades and a accessible ramp will wind its way along the entire eastern edge. Indicated in B is an entry plaza overlook, which is again one of the main entry points from the higher elevation down into the ground, uh, lower elevation, and also incorporates a raised crosswalk, which serves to slow down the traffic and also allow for safe circulation of users from the tennis bubble um, down towards Axon Sports Park. Finally, as one enters from Orval Avenue, uh, they're welcomed by this expansive view of the park with an iconic water mister indicated by the letter Z um, serving as a focal point. Next, please. Concept two is the green spine. So the right side of this plan is essentially the same as from concept one, and all the amenities that were provided in concept one are also included in concept two. But as, um, as you enter through Orval Avenue, your views are directed by this arc in the center, which is the green spine, and drawn through it into the park. Once you enter into this lower area, you can traverse along the the green spine and have easy access to each of the activities. The staggered row of trees start to note some of the more um, naturalistic design of this concept. At the ground plane, 
the lawn is sculpted into a um, uh, spectating berm, sorry about that, <laughs> allowing views to all the activities that's happening in the pump track, skate park, and bike skills, but also facing the other way towards the entry level and kids-oriented play where parents can uh, picnic under the trees and keep an eye on their kids. At the northern end, we had the water misters as well as the restroom. Multiple locations for the restroom was um, examined, but this option allows us to have a relatively short fire access lane, which again is 20 foot wide and allows for the connection for emergency vehicles to come down into the, into the play, uh, play area. This enables us to keep all of the programming integrated with each other, as opposed to having a wide road that breaks it, uh, separates them apart. At the upper level, um, again, we have the drop-off loop and the food truck zone, but the picnic area is defined by a canopy of trees, and the amphitheater seating is also incorporates a more naturalistic aesthetic with lawn panels and trees for seed. Next, please. So I've gone through some of the main differences between concept one and two, but there are also some key similarities between the two. Uh, we understand that sustainability is of um, great importance to this community, and we have incorporated a number of um, ideas to incorporate that. First, um, the wood existing woodland edge has been softened and enhanced in both concepts uh, from the south to the west to the north of this play area. And particularly in the north, as indicated by location I in both concepts, there will be a stream buffer restoration. In addition, stormwater uh, management is key. We see this as an opportunity not just to treat water, but also to integrate the stormwater facilities into the site to allow for uh, better enjoyment of the visitors and also to provide native plantings and other ecological benefits. Each of these concepts have a number of trees shown on, on these plants, but we envision more trees to be incorporated into these designs as well. Next, in terms of accessibility, each of these concepts were designed in concert with the entry drive, and the eventual layout allowed us to incorporate many opportunities for accessible um, routes, connecting everything from the tennis bubble to the parking lot to all of the elements, uh, programming elements in the lower level. Finally, as uh, was confirmed through question two today, uh, there is significant uh, desire for seating and especially sated seating. Some of those were discussed uh, or mentioned during my uh, previous, previous slides, but we also envision multiple seated seating structures to be interspersed throughout the site. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Matt. Thank you so much, Yoshi. Thanks for explaining those two concepts. I know that was a lot to digest, but this is a really big program and it's a it's a big site. And um, we think that's helpful to walk through the site. So thanks again, Yoshi, for explaining that. Now this is the third and final Zoom question tonight. But now that you've had a bit of a primer on both the, the amenities in the space and also the potential layouts or concept designs for the space, let us know what are you most excited about to do at the Action Sports Park? And you can select all that apply. Are you into skating and biking? Or are you into climbing and running and jumping, maybe the extreme fitness area? Or maybe this is more of a space for kids and families. Um, or maybe it's just a place that you can socialize, spectate, and hang out. And at the bare minimum, it would be a pretty interesting place to explore, walk around, get outside, and just do some people watching. So um, read the question and answers and let us know your thoughts. We'll give it a couple seconds here for the answers to come in. <clears throat> Okay, let's let's pop those uh, answers up on the screen. And see how this breaks down. <clears throat> so hopefully you can all see the results. But the majority of responses is about skating and biking. Very interesting, and um, 
neat to see too that there's uh, some interest in just spectating, being out there to explore um, or just walk around the site. Um, and of course, interest in the, the climbing, running, jumping, and the kids wheel play area. So we have a similar question on the open town hall. So again, please take that open town hall online survey, but this is really helpful um, information for us as we continue to refine these concepts. So as, as Yoshi was explaining those concepts, and as I mentioned, this is a complex project and the master plan has a lot of project recommendations in this area. So as we've been concepting and doing some design work, we've been thinking about, okay, how could we implement this without disrupting the public's access to the rest of the Rubini Athletic Complex? Our primary goal here during construction, or one of them, is to make sure that the ice rink and the fields one, two, and three, for example, the dog parks, the nature trails up to the north are remaining open during um, this construction period. And to do this, we need to separate this, this big concept plan into a couple of different phases. Phase one, which will be, uh, is shown in orange, and this would be to renovate the parking lots and courts. Phase two is upgrading the existing maintenance facility, and this would uh, help ensure that we have parks staff on site who can keep an eye and, and maintain and take care of these facilities. And then phase three is the Action Sports Park itself. And again, I hope that this diagram shows that we are looking at this site comprehensively to ensure a well-coordinated and cohesive design. The anticipated timeline is as follows. So to date, we have done a topographic survey on site, including mapping all the utilities and trees on the site. We've done some internal um, scoping and concept work, as you've seen, site analysis. We've investigated the program for this space. And that is what's leading us to tonight, our first big public meeting on this project. Over the next year or so, we'll be taking your feedback to inform what we're calling preliminary design. This is about a 30% level of design, so we're getting a bit more detailed, and there will be additional opportunities for public outreach at this point. And as we keep fleshing out the design more and more, we get more detailed, we'll get start doing construction documents and permitting, and there will be opportunities for focus groups as well. And when I say focus groups, I mean, we'll really be getting into the nitty gritty of the, the skate park design, for example. So if you have strong feelings on individual skate elements or the pump track design, for example, or maybe just some really strong feelings about what the kids wheeled play area should include, that's a great time to really get into the nitty gritty. And then finally, we anticipate construction starting in about 2026. And I need to note that this is pending um, adequate funding uh, for this project. We're almost to the questions and answers. Thanks so much for bearing with us. I know this is a lot of uh, us talking, um, but before we do that, I just want to plug again the online survey. It will only take about three to five minutes. It's about 15 questions and it's on a platform that we call Open Town Hall. And the purpose of this survey is to really make sure that we are hearing the community's priorities and ideas and taking that feedback so we can reflect it in the concept design. And this is open for about another month. So if you haven't taken it already, take it tonight, share it with your friends and family, please spread it far and wide so we can get as many responses as possible. So as I mentioned, we will take your feedback and use it to inform the site design. And we anticipate this fall or, or um, later this year, refining these concepts, possibly narrowing it from two down to one, maybe it's a hybrid of both, and uh, getting a little bit farther along in the concept design process. Again, here's my contact information. Um, the link to the project website. This is the best way to stay abreast of all the goings on with this project. And again, the link for the Open Town Hall survey. Please be sure to take it. 
if you have questions about the, the tennis and pickleball and basketball court project, the link is at the top of the screen. There's also a recorded video for that project on the website that you can watch and, and get more detail about the, the courts projects than we have time for this presentation. If you have questions about um, the park in general or any questions about Montgomery Parks for that matter, please be sure to contact the uh, customer service um, line or email shown on the screen. And if you ever have questions about safety, um, please direct them, them to the park police. So with that, uh, I'd like to open it up for questions and discussion, and I will pass the mic over to Tricia McManus, who's the design section supervisor. Okay. Thanks, Matt. Um, as Matt mentioned previously, our project team is on the call with us tonight, and we're going to work together to try to address your questions and comments. And we do have quite a few people from our team on the call to address all aspects of you know, the project. So in addition to Matt, our team includes our design consultants, um, Elliot Roadside, Yoshi Kubata, and Ron Sessoms from Roadside and Harwell Landscape Architects. We have um, Christy Kabadi, our Acting Division Chief for Park Planning and Stewardship. We have Josh Arnett, who's our Engineering Section Manager. Andrew Sai, our Project Engineer. Eric Sue, who is the Project Manager for the adjacent um, courts and parking uh, renovation project. We have Chuck Kynes, our Park Planner. Joe Fearcob, our Regional Operations Manager for Southern Area Parks. Um, Troy Mason, who is our park manager. So if there's you know questions on operations and maintenance, um, we have Carl Weber, who is our athletic field program manager. And we also have um, Officer Derek Williams from Park Police. So um, we are we um, are looking forward to um, trying to address as much as many of the comments as we can tonight. And I think we will we'll likely get through everything. So, um, you know, what we probably won't do is if we have a lot of the same comment, you know, we will address it once, but we're going to work from top, um, top to bottom. And, you know, anything that we don't get to tonight, we will respond, we will post all the comments from the Q&A um, on our project webpage and, and make sure that we've responded in writing to those um, comments as well. So the way we're going to handle this is um, we'll go through the the questions and comments, and I will try to direct those to our team members who I think uh, might best be able to answer them. But I'm asking, you know, all of our team on the call to just jump in if you have information to add to the discussion. So um, we'll get started here. And, you know, some of the early um, comments and questions at the top are related to the park master plan. So I'm going to direct some of these to um, Chuck and Christy, but um, you know the first comment is asking whether this decision is final, and um, in terms of I'm assuming in terms of um, this facility, and you know this was a recommendation, the signature recommendation of a master plan that's been approved by the planning board, and we have already. Um, you know, requested funding for implementation of the master plan. So our our team is the implementation team. Um, so I think that, you know, the project, we are intending to move forward with the project, but um, if you have, you know, specific comments on how we could, you know, make it, we're, we're open to suggestions on how to, um, you know, on how to, design the park and any, you know, comments that you have that, that would um, make this, you know, that, that could respond to whatever the issues are in terms of the objections. Um, then the um, next comments are, I'm going to, um, I'm going to pull together the ones, the next few comments that are related to the master plan and um, ask Chuck, uh, to perhaps address some of these. There was um, first a comment about why we're not putting in a soccer field or a mini golf um, that's consistent with the gr this green area of the park. And um, also there was a comment related to master plan recommendations about 
purchasing the um, houses and lots along Arcola Avenue and when might that happen? So Chuck, could you, um, could you comment on those? Sure. So I'll start with the second one first. Um, yes, the master plan did identify certain properties for acquisition over time. Uh, this is not going to be something that we actively pursue. We're just going to monitor when houses come on the market and make an offer. So it's only going to be from willing sellers. Uh, we're not going to uh, actively approach homeowners to purchase homes. So that's that's the the first to answer the the second question. The first question was uh, soccer field and mini golf. Um, there were a number of amenities that were requested as part of the master plan process. Mini golf wasn't really one that was mentioned a whole lot, um, but the Rubini complex will eventually have a soccer field uh, it, it, or two. Um, it is part of the master plan. The wooded area behind the tennis bubble and ice rink um, will include uh, a, a new soccer field or two and a new entrance to the park um, eventually. That's very long term. Uh, so, you know, what we're doing as part of this project is prioritizing uh, the Action Sports Park and other things that uh, are related to that, including parking lot and uh, the the ball courts. And uh, while I'm on the subject, I did see at the bottom, uh, there were some comments about the dog park. Uh, yeah, the master plan recommended renovation of the dog park, but it's not uh, going to be as part of one of the initial phases of uh, improvements to the Ribini complex, but it will eventually uh, make it into the capital improvement program. Yes. Okay, thanks, Chuck. And the this next um, um, is a series of questions. And um, the first was, who is running the Action Sports Park? And actually, and is it a paid activity? It will actually be a free activity like our other um, sports parks and our, our other skate parks and bike skills areas. We have um, pump tracks coming on online. So it will be free, open to the public. Um, there is no nobody taking money or, you know, on site supervision um, in terms of insurance. Um, the the Park and Planning Commission is self insured, but um, and I'm I'm assuming that question is related to, you know, the potential for for injury or for um, you know these these kinds of activities which are inherently risky. And I might ask um, Officer Williams to to comment on, um, you know, on our park rules related to these these kinds of facilities. I know that, you know, we do post signs at all of our um, skate parks and, you know, active um, active facilities, saying that you know people who are participate in these facilities and using them are you know responsible responsible for um you know their own safety and that we we have a series of rules that that recommend things like uh, protective gear there's there are rules that you know there's no glass allowed in some of these areas but i i'm going to ask i'm not you know as familiar with the rules as maybe and actually maybe our um operations manager um joe might be able to add to this also but um oh michelle says um she would like to answer so um please jump in so from our team park police um any from anyone from operations and from our um our public outreach group Oh, Officer Williams, we can't hear you. Okay. Oh, there you yeah, are. Listen. Okay. Um, okay. Listen, good evening, everyone. Like I said, it's not that we normally have signs posted at our parks, at the skate parks, part of the rules and regulations. Um, of course, it's not anything you can go to jail or receive a citation for, but we do have rules there. And by chance, somebody violating those rules, they'll be asked to comply or just either leave the park. Okay. 
Okay. Um, that, Joe, do you have anything that you'd like to add to that? No? Hey, good evening, everybody. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, we're pretty, on the operations side, we're pretty limited on what we can do as far as on-site supervision, so we don't actually offer any on-site supervision. It, it is largely at your own risk. Um, it's kind of like the same places of the pump tracks around and the skate parks that are around the parks that are used to seeing. Um, so yeah, it is at your own risk. Uh, we do have risk management division. Uh, there's also, if, if there are injuries, there's the, uh, customer support line that can, uh, assist you in all those things. But as far as operations are concerned, it's, yes, it's at your own risk activities, like much of our parks are. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Um, and th this next question is a design question. So I'm going to um, ask the design team um, to comment on this, but um, there's a question here about in that both concepts show the children's areas um, furthest from the entrance to the, um, to the action sports park. So could you comment on um, how you know, the, the thinking behind that. And um, the, I think there are multiple entrances, but if our team are um, Elliot, Ron and uh, Yoshi and Matt could offer any comments that you have on that. Sure, um, I, I can start. Um, so one of the challenges as we talked about for this site is the great difference between the parking lot level and the um, Daxon Sports Park. Um, it, it is very true that in, in plan, uh, the children play areas are a little bit further from the playground. And it, it was a struggle, I think, to try to figure out what the perfect balance is. But um, we do also have the ramps that connect down from the parking lot into the play areas. And those allow a, um, a closer connection to these kids' areas from the parking lot. So that's one um, consideration. The other part of it is I did not touch upon this, but each of these plans have three locations where the park is connected to the Nairn Trail. And the Nairn Trail can be utilized by the community, um, at least those who live very nearby, um, to come through the trails and then enter the park. So for those people, um, the location of the kids' um, activities, as indicated, actually uh, become a little bit easier for those who might be pushing the kids along in a stroller and entering from that location. Um, Matt, since you have the pointer, could you point to those locations on the plans um, so people can see? There you go. Yeah, that those are the two entrances to the trail system. Yeah, for the three. Yeah. Okay. All right. And if, <clears throat> Trisha, if I may add a bit to okay. what Yoshi had to say. Yeah. Um, I would add that... Um, Yoshi alluded to this while I'll explain the two concepts, but a really important component to both of these concepts is that we are trying to uh, tuck the, the most intense uses, uh, the most advanced uses, so that's the skate park, the pump track, and the bike skills, move that to the north end of the site, both in concept one and concept two. And the reason for that is that we want to give a buffer between the, the residences to the south and we found uh, that the, I think the adventure play and the kids wheeled play areas are a bit quieter than perhaps the um, skate park and pump track. Um, and we wanted to kind of stagger those intensity of uses from uh, less intense to more intense as you get farther away from the, the houses. So that's one reason why um, the, the kids areas are located where they are. But I think especially with the, um, the green spine concept, there's some potential that the kids wheeled play and the adventure play and the climbing fitness, they could, they could certainly shift around as we study this project further. Okay, thanks. Um, we do have a couple of questions um, from Justin about um, sort of green um, aspects of the design. Um, one question, um, could we have shade structures with solar panels that can run mobile uh, phone chargers, which would be absolutely, that's a great idea. We we 
um, often do that. You know, that's an easy thing to incorporate into projects, and we do that in in many of our newer parks. And then um, question and Matt, um, or or maybe one of our engineers um, could touch on this one about the restrooms having gray water recycling. And I know, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure about that, but that's, I think that's something we could look into. Uh, Matt, do you have any thoughts on that? We, we have been very at a conceptual level thinking about the potential for a restroom on site. Uh, there's a lot of constraints um, for us to think about, including the, the sanitary sewer line and the water line that somewhat limit where the restrooms could go. As Yoshi mentioned, if we want a restroom in the lower area, it does take away from amenity space and it does require a really big uh, 20 foot wide fire access lane from the driveway into the park. And again, that divides the site up and takes space away from action sports amenities. But gray water recycling is a bit of a new concept to me um, that I can't speak too much about, but we did, um, and I'd be curious what the engineers or maybe operations staff has to say about it. We did talk briefly about some other restroom types, um, like a throne restroom, if everyone has heard of that. But I think there's some limiting factors on that with the amount of people coming to the site. Some options like that might not be quite so feasible here, but we'll continue to study that. And I would, if others in the call have other feedback on gray water recycling, um, I'd be all ears. Josh or um uh, I'm I'm happy to touch on that a little okay, bit as well. Good. Um, oh thanks, Andrew. Yeah, as Matt mentioned, we've been studying the potential for um an on-site restroom building. Um gray water certainly, you know, we we love to conserve natural resources here at parks, so the ability to reuse um water to flush toilets is something that um if it's possible, we would like to to sort of assess. And but the challenge here is that with the amount of users that we anticipate. Uh, utilizing the park, um, we're not we're not sure if gray water alone would be sort of sufficient, um, which then ties into the challenges Matt just described of the on-site water and the on-site sanitary uh, sewer main. Um, but but certainly that's something that we're we're assessing um, as we advance into design. Okay, great, thanks, Andrew. And um, you know, we did I did see from the online surveys already how important um, an item that restrooms seem to be. Um, from our open town hall in terms of an amenity that people really want um, in this area. So we'll, we'll, you know, we will definitely be looking into all the options to, to um, provide that kind of a, a, provide restroom facilities for the area. So the, the next question um, from Linda is, will there be a public art component? And I think we would love to have public art here. It would really activate the space and, and make it special. I, I'm i gonna also direct this to Matt and um, Yoshi and our design team um, to talk about, you know, any thought, any preliminary thoughts that the team has about how public art could be incorporated. I have a couple ideas and then I'd, I, I'm curious for Yoshi and the Roadside Hardwell's team's thought as well. But um, public art, I think, can take many forms, especially at this park. One aspect that we thought is kind of a great multi-use option is when, as we've been thinking about these water misters, there's great potential for the water mister itself, not just to spray water mist, but also become a bit of a sculptural element, like shown in the image here on the right-hand side. Um, so there's potential like that. There's also the potential to incorporate art into the skate park itself. And this could be the in the form of like a mural like you see, but there's some great skatable art elements as well. I don't have a great picture in this presentation, but I alluded to a skatable or an identifiable signature skate element. And I pointed to this image in the top right. But there are many skate parks around that have um, color within the concrete, art, uh, artwork on the skate park itself and signature skate elements um, are one opportunity for that kind of public art. But Yoshi and um, Yoshi, do you have any any additional thoughts on, on public art? 
Yeah, I think, Matt, you, you touched upon um, all the major points, but I guess one thing that I might add is that this is a great question, I think, because art is so essential in providing, the um, creating a, um, a lively space, even when there's not a ton of people around. So um, incorporating it in, in any way through sculpture, through murals, through um, ground plane patterns, or incorporating it directly into the skate park features, um, I think that's, that's something that definitely should happen um, and be considered. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Yoshi. Um, and, and actually, Matt, I want to, um, I'm skipping down a little bit because you had mentioned the water mist feature. Um, and there is also a question about um, in concept one, whether the water mist feature will block the view of the skate park from the sloped central court. So I'm just, that's a little bit of a follow up since we we're just talking about that feature. Could the design team talk about that? Sure. Um, I think that's a, that is a good question uh, because the way the the lawn panel in this scenario tilts towards the skate park and the the water mister is right in between, it's a good question. I'm, I I don't think we're quite at that level of detailed design yet. But one thing I would ask the audience to keep in mind is the scale of this park. I didn't mention this is eight acres, the three ball fields, more or less. So um, it's a really big space and, and the water mister probably wouldn't be so big, uh, maybe not quite as big as it's shown in the plan here, but I, I don't think it would really significantly block views, but that's a design feature that we'll be sure to keep in mind as this moves forward. Okay, thanks. Um, question here about, can some of the seating be dynamic like swinging benches and uh, we've we've started to incorporate those into some of our um, parks, and I think that would be a great thing that we could consider. Um, I, I'm, does anyone on our team want to uh, talk a little bit about how or where we might include some of those kinds of features? I could answer that question. Okay. Uh, I think that's a really wonderful idea. And Matt, if you want to bring back the plan, <clears throat> the uh, swinging benches, swinging chairs could be part of the uh, perimeter circular loop where uh, there are viewing places and comfortable shady places along the edge. And they could be tucked in in other various places where there are views of the different activity areas. So I think that would be wonderful and a great attraction for people of you know lots of different ages to come down to when the park is quiet or to be there uh, when there are major activities off to the side or integrated into the heart of the circulation area. So I really like that idea. Great, thanks, Elliot. Um, the next two uh, questions and comments are um, more traffic related. So I'm going to ask if maybe Andrew might be able to address these. Um, one question was, what did we mean by the raised um, crosswalk, I think, um, on the entrance drive, um, as we were describing the initial design? Is that a, a crosswalk over a speed table? Or it is, a, is it a continuous crosswalk? So the concern is accessibility. And then Secondly, which is related with um, traffic, would the county put a red light at the Oraba and Arcola intersection to make it easier to leave the park? So I know Andrew, um, you you've been Andrew does um, a lot of our projects related to Vision Zero, and you know improving pedestrian and um, bicycle access. And um, so um, Andrew, could you address those two? Comments. Oh, yeah, ab absolutely. Um, yeah, great question for the first one. So actually, um, in relation to the um, sort of plaza entry, uh, the letter B um, on concept one, and I believe concept two also has identified it with the letter B, um, I'm not sure it would actually fall under the criteria for either a race crosswalk or a continuous crosswalk. I think the way uh, I, I would best describe it is probably a raised uh, 
raised plaza or a raised intersection. Um, so if you can visualize uh, looking in at uh, the letter B there on the to the left of it and to the right, if you're coming from the, the parking lot of the tennis bubble and you're going to cross that that entry plaza, um, the pathway to cross that plaza is going to be at grade with a very minimal, uh, less than 2% slope. But that whole plaza is going to be raised up a few inches um, to provide a vertical deflection to slow vehicles down that are going to be coming uh, via entry and exit off of Orbaugh Avenue. Um, so I think, um, you know, since this plaza is going to be sort of the gateway to both the adventure sports, uh, the, the action sports park, but also the gateway to the overall um, Rubini Athletic Complex itself, um, I, I would describe it probably as a raised, um, you know, raised intersection, raised plaza entry um, uh, sort of uh, control. Um, and the second question regarding uh, a stop sign at the intersection of Orba and Arcola. Uh, that has been something that we uh, have heard from residents before. And last fall, uh, we hired a traffic consultant to conduct a both a stop sign warrant study and a traffic signal warrant study um, at that intersection. And we did study during the busiest weekend of the fall, uh, which was the only boys and girls uh, baseball tournament. Um, during that tournament, every field was completely permitted for the entire weekend, and there were over 3,000 um cars a day uh, coming into the park um, in a peak vehicle traffic of about 300 cars an hour. Um, unfortunately, uh, based on MCDOT's criteria for uh, a four-way stop sign and a traffic signal, um, as that intersection is MCDOT right of way, uh, we did not meet uh, their thresholds for um, vehicle um, volumes uh, or accident history. Um, so right now, uh, we don't quite meet the criteria to to install a, a four-way stop or a traffic signal. Uh, with that said, uh, throughout this project, um, as well as future safety projects we have planned throughout the overall area, um, we work with DOT, we work with SHA, and we're certainly going to keep working with um, DOT to, to make access to and from the park as safe as we can. Um, I, I saw another question about, I, I think, bicycle and pedestrian access throughout Wheaton Regional Park. So I think that actually is a good segue into, um, we just received a uh, $7.5 million federal grant called Safe Streets for All to implement safety and trail connection improvements throughout Wheaton Regional Park, throughout the Matthew Henson Trail, and throughout Sligo Creek Trail. Um, we have a few projects planned at this location that will improve connectivity from sort of holistically all around the area, um, including to the south uh, from the Sligo Creek Trail to Wheaton Regional Park. Uh, we're looking at assessing a new um, trail connection behind Cole Terrace. We're looking at improving uh, existing connectivity from Orbaugh Avenue and from Channing Drive. Um, as Matt mentioned during the presentation, we're going to be renovating the Wheaton Loop Trail that goes around Nairn. Uh, it goes around Henderson Avenue. It goes around Parker Avenue. Uh, as part of that, we're going to be improving the actual connections to those residential streets. So that'll provide another way um, for safe connections uh, from those adjacent neighborhoods. Um, one big uh, potential project we're looking at actually is along Kemp Mill Road, uh, a new shared use path along Kemp Mill Road connecting Wheaton Regional Park to Randolph Road, um, which will provide uh, enhanced safe connections from the north and the east side um, of the park as well. Uh, we do have sort of a targeted outreach planned in the next few weeks for the Safe Streets for All projects. So, uh, you know, please stay tuned uh, for more information on that in the coming weeks. Okay, thanks so much for for that and for addressing, you know, that related um, questions because I know a lot of people were that came up in the um, Open Town Hall survey quite a bit. So, um, thanks for that, and. Uh, um, next few questions um, about design, just to describe whether the green spine area would be level or hilly. And then, uh, you know, a, a, a comment um, that people really appreciate the, the designs. And I saw that further down in the, in the questions as well. But um, we really appreciate the work that Roadside and Harwell team have done to develop these plans have been very carefully thought through and and um but um so would anyone like to answer the question about the um the green spine hill open green space 
Sure. Um, the the green spine, the spectating berm, as uh, as initially thought, I believe it was considered more as a uh, consistent sloped hill, so people can sit there. That being said, um, I think it is a very interesting idea to consider a bumpy area as well, as that would provide more space for, say, little kids to just run around and enjoy um, enjoy the area. I don't think it would be the entirety of this long arc, but it is a very lengthy arc that we have here. So I think um, to, to answer the question, it was conceived of as a sloped berm, but there is potential to incorporate additional um, mounding as well. And thank you also for, for the uh, positive comment regarding the concept. It, it, it's uh, very much appreciated. And yeah, thanks, Yoshi. Um, so the question about the restrooms, would they be um, unisex or the old style? We are putting um, unisex restrooms in, in all of our um, recent restroom buildings. So I think that would that is clear. Um, we did that most recently at Hillendale Park uh, in our, our restroom and shelter there. Um, the next comment, and this might be more of an operations or um, park rules, so I might be asking um, Officer Williams or, or um, Joe or Troy to clarify, but um, it's the question is, will it be clear that biking, skating won't be welcome throughout the park, but primarily in the areas dedicated? And I think bikes are, uh, I mean, bikes can go anywhere within the park, but um, are there specific rules, the park rules regarding um, skateboarding? Um, could Could someone address that? Um, Officer Williams, or there you go. Okay. Uh, yes, the skateboarding rules very similar to the bicycle rules, so long as it's not interfering with people and uh, speeds under fifteen miles per hour. Um, there's no rules that against it. anything above fifteen miles per hour, both cyclists or skateboarding, or then that's against um that would be a violation of park rules. Oh, okay, that's good. Good to know. Um, and then the next question. Um, will there be bike parking added to the ice rink? And that's, I think if there is no bike parking there, we would certainly want to take a look at that and consider that, you know, as we're looking at, um, and Eric, I'm gonna ask um, Eric, who's working on the car, the courts and the parking lot um, renovation project, is that something we could add? We're almost, that part, that portion of our project almost goes to the ice rink, but is that something we could add um, to that end of the park? Yeah, um, so the so the courts and parking improvement project is in detailed design currently, and uh, that's absolutely something that we can um, throw into consideration. Okay, great. Um, and this question, have we considered how bikers will safely access the pump track and bike skills track from the parking areas? So they might be tempted to ride to the facilities through pedestrian walkways. Um, should, be consider should consideration be given to locating facilities where users may ride um, from the parking lot closer to parking to the skate park. So it will would there be a separate circulation route? I don't think so, but is that some and it, and I'm not sure we've we've thought through that in a lot of detail yet, but um Matt and our design team, do you have any thoughts about um how, you know, pedestrian and bicycles intermingle on the access routes to the facility? That is a design detail that we are keeping in mind. I'm not sure we're quite there yet, but I would like to note that a really big part of the Wheaton Regional Park master plan was wayfinding improvements. And part of that is just increasing the public's awareness of kind of trail etiquette. And I think when I, by that, I mean pedestrians and bikers using the same facility and just increasing awareness of um, proper etiquette when you're passing someone, for example. 
Um, so that's a good, really good comment. We'll keep that in mind. But we are looking at adding multiple ways to get into the action sports park from the upper elevations, the parking lot, and the roadway down into the action sports park. So hopefully if we can make it convenient and accessible and safe with multiple points of entry, that will help avoid some points of conflict. Okay, thanks, Matt. And a question for um, Andrew, I think again about more related to stormwater management, um, would we investigate the flooding potential of um, the facility given that those fields are quite wet right now? And I, you know, we will be incorporating stormwater management practices throughout the design, but um, Andrew, do you have any initial thoughts about how we might address um, stormwater management in this bowl that we're, uh, that's our site? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of our goals when we do any new development or new development in Montgomery County is to just make sure that um, we're not making any flooding situations any worse and ideally making them a lot better. Um, so we're going to make sure that we're minimizing the amount of impervious error that we add um, under as any development. Um, we're going to install um, environmental site design stormwater management practices um, to the maximum extent that we can to help treat runoff and make sure runoff doesn't um, drain to those down, downstream areas and have the potential to flood um, the fields or, or other areas that we don't want them to flood. Uh, we have an ongoing effort project uh, in design right now to actually enhance a lot of our streams and drainage channels throughout, throughout Wheaton Regional Park, uh, which will also help um, address uh, drainage issues. So we sort of have a, a, a multi-pronged approach to, to make sure that our development doesn't um, worsen any flooding issues and in many cases improves upon those flooding issues and drainage issues. Okay, thanks, Andrew. And um, I, I just wanna add oh, to that, okay. Tricia. Um, sure. So at for the um, courts and parking renovation project, we're also going to be working on uh, improving the drainage and um, incorporating stormwater management to manage the upstream runoff that um, comes from the courts and the driveway and the parking uh, and tennis area as well. So that that should help with the um, with the drainage at the lower part of the park as well. Okay, great. Thanks, Eric. And, and Trisha, this... if I may add oh, one okay. last point about stormwater yeah, management. Um, I'm familiar with a, a particular problem area. I think that this question may be alluding to by field six in this lower area and our park management team knows us better than anyone. Uh, we are very aware of this uh, location, uh, really collecting a lot of water the fields are quite shallow sloping, so water really does not move from here very well, and I think it creates those soggy and saturated conditions that are being alluded to. And just one more point about stormwater management more broadly, um, we are considering stormwater management from the get-go of this concept design, so this is something that we're looking to um, thoughtfully integrate into the, the entirety of the site um, and really address water in a thoughtful manner um, and not just merely as a permitting requirement. It really can become a well thought out feature of the site. And that's what our hope is for this project. Okay, thanks. Thanks everyone. Um, a couple questions here about, um, have we identi identified skate park design companies to design and build those elements? And no, not at this point. There's, there's many um, qualified uh, design build companies out there, but we're really very early in the process. So we're, we're not um, at that point yet, but we would certainly um, hire someone who's capable and has the expertise of, of designing and building those types of facilities. Um, a question here about, are there plans to include um, shelters or pavilions to rent in this part of the park? And Joe, I'm, I am going to ask you to confirm, but you know, those facilities, um, I, I don't think we're likely to include those in this area of the park, just because we want any shelters that we have, I think we would want to be open to everybody. Um, I There probably are other areas in the park where people can um, rent shelters, but um, 
I'm just, Joe, do you have anything to add, or Troy, anything to add to that? Or is, is, does that sound accurate? Yeah. What you said, Trish was, was, was very accurate. Uh, our shore field side uh, of the park is kind of where our rentals are. It's got the pavilion or uh, it's got the carousel. It's got the main trail. It's got some playgrounds uh, over there. So that's kind of like the main rental space uh, along with the enterprise facilities. This is more of the, um, this is more of the sports area is the sports air, um, plex that we're kind of going with over there. So it, it kind of doesn't really fit in there. And yes, we do. One of, one of the things that we're wanting to, uh, to look at is there is just putting down blankets, having a picnic. That's kind of the stuff that we're trying to focus on from, from the concept plans that I'm seeing and in discussions as well. We want people to, to feel welcome, enjoyable without having to change a lot of money. That's kind of where that's going. Great. Um, and just um, the next question, this is a great question. Understanding that funding is not confirmed yet, how will you prioritize which elements will be built if we don't receive the full funding to complete the design? And that's really a great question. And that's where the um, your preferences and your input on the open town hall survey are so important. And one of the reasons we ask people to prioritize the amenities is so that we know, you know, what to focus on and what um, people are most interested in if, when we do have to make decisions about the budgets and, um, and, and if we can't do everything that we would like to do. But um, so that's, that's a good question. And we'll know more, you know, when we move further into the detailed design, but, you know, the public feedback is, and input is what, you know, is a strong driver for what what we build and what's most important. Um, the next um, comments, are there dimensions for the bike and skate areas? And I know the design team knows these off the top of their head. So um, could someone address that question? <laughs> Elliot, is, is you or I saw well, your I mic don't on. Have or... offhand. Okay. But we did um, work very carefully with the uh, uh, spatial dimensions required for each of them and the dashed lines as well as the lines outside that uh, show the core of those activity areas as well as the spillover areas for them. So based on standards that uh, MNCPPC and our design team evolved, uh, we feel really comfortable that uh, the activities can be dynamic and and meet the higher standards of these kinds of activities. And I can speak to the square footage sizes a bit. Um, we we did do extensive research on nearby skate park facilities, and since this is a regional park, the skate parks, the skate park, and the pump track and the the kids wheel play area should be sized accordingly. This is a bigger scale than a neighborhood or a local park. And these facilities should be designed and scaled accordingly. So the skate park is, I believe um, that that circle line is, I think 20 or 25,000 square feet. The pump track is about 15 to 20, if I recall correctly. And the wheel, kids wheeled play might be about 10,000 square feet. So these are in flux, these are estimates. And at this point of the design process, just scaled um, according to what a regional destination would be. Okay. All right. Thank you. And um, a, a comment here about um, encouraging the county to improve public transportation access um, and bike infrastructure to and from Wheaton Regional Park. And I think as um, Andrew mentioned earlier, we are we are looking at at least the bike infrastructure and, you know, that's something I think the public transportation is something we can also look into as we move forward. Um, um, a question about uh, um, whether we could locate some of the children's facilities closest to the restrooms. And I know, Yoshi, when um, you were describing the design, you know, when you have fully plumbed restrooms that require the fire truck access, I mean, the intent was to try to keep them to the most accessible 
um, areas of the park. Um, so, but that is something we can think about a little bit more. I think it, you know, I'm thinking off the top of my head, but, you know, um, the restrooms were located in the areas they were because they were very easily accessible to roads and and the the um, water and sewer lines. But I mean, it might be possible to have another type of restroom, like a vault toilet or, you know, closer to, to the children's areas. But any thoughts from our team quickly on that? I see we're, we're, we're running out of time. So I do want to um, try to um, catch any other comments that we might have missed, but any thoughts on the restrooms? Because that I did see that come up quite a bit in the open town hall survey. Matt, any thoughts? Put you on the spot. <laughs> um, yes, we we are studying the potential for a fully plumbed bathroom. We think that is the most desired option. And uh, we, we have thought long and hard about potential locations, but there are con site constraints, we, as we've talked about. If we're to consider something like a vault toilet or a throne toilet, we just really need to study that a bit more because as I mentioned before, those toilets can only really be used so many times um, before needing to be serviced. And um, with the, the quantity of people using this park, we just really need to keep that in mind to make sure that the bathroom facility can properly accommodate the amount of volume that will be at this park. But I think the potential maybe for a vault near the kids' playground is, is definitely a worthy comment that we'll keep in mind and study further. Okay, thanks. Um, the, the next two um, comments are related to um, the some of the users of these facilities are are um, encouraging you know skating at your own risk rather than having enforceable rules. Also, um, you know, would we be reaching out to other others you know other users for for feedback, not just um, skateboarders? But yes, definitely. I mean, and and as we move further into the design and get into more detail detail of these all of these facilities we will be you know wanting to have some um, focus groups and you know working directly with the users and the design builders to get you know feedback on on all of these facilities so definitely we would be doing that and then um, is shade possible in the action areas such as the skate park and the bike areas and I think you know, we, that's something we will, yes, I think so. I mean, that's something we will be considering as we get further into the design. I mean, this is really, a, these are really concept plans right now. And uh, as y Yoshi had mentioned, you know, it, it's not really showing everywhere there might be planting, but yes, we, 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 you know, agree that shade is very important and we'll be looking to cor incorporate that into the plans. Um, I just want to see if I can get through <laughs> to as we're um, closing on our time, but um, will lights be included in the design? And yes, um, that was that was recommended in the park master plan, and we are intending to light the the um, the facility so that it can be used after um, sundown. So. Um, that is definitely part of the plan. We haven't um, really looked in detail at what kind of lighting that might be or what the hours would be, but um, yes, this this facility would be lighted. Uh, and then uh, here's a question about fields. I'd um, like to um, ask Carl Weber, our um, athletic fields um, program manager, to um, address this about, you know, how are we addressing the need for field use? And I know that uh, uh, Carl has taken a close look at, and Christy, if you have comments on this as well, has um, has been working, you know, closely to identify alternative fields for that use, as well as trying to gather some comments from the users about how we could improve other facilities in the in the area. So Carl, could you um, 
talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good evening, everybody. So yeah, we understood that we are going to be displacing some of our users. So so we pulled permits and uh, decided to talk to the top, I think it was eight users, basically. I think anybody with over 50 hours of permits and, and let them know uh, that the fields were going away and see if they had suggestions on where we could make improvements. Uh, we are looking at several fields in the area uh, and making some improvements to them, whether they're their dugouts or their infield renovations. I know MLK recently got the baseball field, got an infield renovation. Uh, Glenmont Local Park recently opened at the softball field. Uh, there's been some renovations at Blair. Um, the high school fields through our MCPS contract, uh, and that, that softball field looks like it's going to go into uh, CUPF uh, here shortly. So we are, we are definitely looking at um, improvements in the area, uh, you know, we may not be able to exactly build new baseball fields, but uh, we are looking at improving our existing inventory and then possibly maybe there's a conversion from a softball field to a, a baseball field out there that could help also. Okay, thanks so much, Carl. And um, I did see, I, I think, a comment that might have been answered about um, wheelchair users for um, for these facilities. I did want to just mention that we did um, take this initial these initial concepts to the Commission on People with Disabilities to get their feedback on, you know, our ideas for the park and how, you know, accessibility was being considered. Um, not only within the facility, but in the connections to other areas of the Rubini complex. So uh, we are definitely thinking about um, all, all wheeled users using the facilities as well as um, people that would be ex ex accessing the area, whether they're using the facilities or not. Um, and then Yes, a comment about Carol Knowles about the pump track, you know, that this we're envisioning this to be, you know, similar type of facilities. And um, how can the community make sure the project receives adequate funding um, to build the park? I think that's, you know, we encourage any, you know, people who have comments or who are interested in these types of facilities to come out when there are um, budget hearings on our capital improvements program. Um, it's, you know, it, it, every two years, uh, the program goes to the um, planning board for, for public comment, as well as to the county council members. So, um, you know, letting your county council members who make the final decisions know of your interests is a good way to um, support the project. So I think um, that is, is, um, We've um, we got lots of thank yous and and um, nice comments about the the plans, but I do want to just um, I know we're a little bit over, but just want to make sure that any uh, anybody else on our team has any um, thoughts about things you would like to any comments that you have about issues we might not have addressed that um, you'd like to make before we close just i want to make sure everyone has a chance to um to to um add any additional um comments or issues about your area of expertise anything about operations um i know that matt did um did mention that we are going to be renovating the small maintenance yards to the north of of this area, and I think having a um, better yard for our operations staff to be able to take care of this area is something that's um, we're you know very important part of uh, making sure this facility is a success. So um, if no one's going to jump in, I think I just want to um, thank everybody for uh, so much for joining us tonight, and we really appreciate all the thoughtful feedback that we've received tonight and um, in the open town hall survey. There's a lot of great comments 
and you know you'll you will have additional opportunities to provide input as we move forward and we really do encourage anyone who hasn't taken our online survey um, yet to go go there and provide your uh, any any ideas that you have and if you do have other additional you know questions or comments that you think of later or if we didn't address an issue well enough tonight uh, please feel free to reach out and contact Matt directly. So um, before we close, I'd also like to acknowledge several other uh, of our team members who've been supporting us on the call, especially um, Michelle Ramirez, Melissa Chotner, and Susan Stafford from our public affairs office. They help us with um, everything related to, you know, community notification, surveys, signage, you know, social media postings, and, you know, they, they do just a great job. Um, and I also want to thank um, Peter Batista, our Spanish language interpreter, who is on the call tonight. So thank you all. Um, we couldn't do our jobs and do this work without you. So, um, Matt, I'll turn it back to you for any uh, final comments that you have to close the meeting. I would like to, again, just thank everyone, uh, both internal staff and, of course, the public who attended tonight. I know this was a, a pretty uh, heavy amount of content and uh, program ideas and concept ideas and, and great discussion. So thank you so much for uh, sticking with us through this meeting. The, the very last question that was asked about how can you um, support this vision becomes a reality. Tricia mentioned the CIP process and, and reaching out to your county council member. We're in the midst of that process right now, and I think they're accepting people to sign up and testify. So if you're willing to be an advocate for this project, please uh, go to the county council website, and they have options to sign up at a couple of different dates and times, and uh, let them know how you feel about this project. So with that, I'd like to again say thank you. Please take the survey. Please reach out to us if you have any questions. And um, until next the next meeting, um, have a great night.